we've been drinking throughout the break. All right. We are back for the final round of Spin the Bottle with our guest host, Brian Balthazar. Yay. All right, Brian, what is our final category? Okay, it is Brian's choice. And for this bonus round, I'm having you dish on the foods that define you. Let's see what's on the menu. Up on this wall behind you are six dishes. I asked each one of you to pick a food that defined you. In, in other words, one that created a lasting impression or helped shape the cook you are today, okay? So I want to see how well you know your co-hosts. Gail, you're first. So Daphne, what food on that wall do you think was a formative food for Gail? Here's my deductive reasoning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Avocado <laughs> toast wasn't a thing until like five years ago. Oh, okay. <laughs> so right out of the gates, I'm Smart. ruling her out. All right. Um, apple pie I could see because Gail is like a sneaky baker. She's got a lot of tricks up her sleeve in the sweet category, so I want to go there. But at the end of the day, I am going Caesar salad with rustically torn croutons because something tells me that Gail was like, nooks and crannies give me more crunch. I love it. And, like, 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 Gail, so tell me, tell me, tell me what's the answer. I love rustically torn croutons. Okay, know, um, Jamika, what do you think the answer is? I want to say the artichoke. All right, Gail, what's the answer? Well, it could have been the artichoke because okay. we, I definitely have a lot of memories of eating artichokes as children. My brother especially was obsessed with artichokes, but that's not what it is. Okay. But it's the zucchini. No, come oh, on! Oh, zucchini! <laughs> yes. Tell us about the formative like, zucchini. Uh, crystal clear. Yeah. <laughs> when I needed to answer this question, I did not hesitate for a second. In fact, I wrote about this in my book because it is such a defining food yeah. in my life, in my childhood. And I swear this is a true story. Growing up, my mother was an incredible cook. And whenever kids would come to our house, she always made zucchini, which, as you can imagine, when you're like six, is horrifying. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> because I want my friends to come over to think I'm cool and want to come back. Yes. And you don't want your mom serving zucchini. It's so uh. embarrassing. Always zucchini. So <laughs> she used to tell this story to my friends and my brother's friends growing up. Uh -huh. And in retrospect, like I'm honestly horrified. And she might be horrified that I'm telling the story on national <laughs> television. But it's true, and I can laugh about it now, sort of. <laughs> she would tell my friends that actually, when they would, you know, refuse the zucchini, she would say, oh, well, you know, we used to have a fourth child in this family. Hmm? <laughs> but they passed away from zucchiniitis. Because <laughs> I forced them to eat so much zucchini. Oh. I swear to you, she would tell, like, 12-year-old boys this. <laughs> and, of course, she would get calls from my friends' parents right. being like, my child came home and told me this story, and I'm so sorry to hear. Oh, no, I swear to you. And, like... <laughs> We would just, we would just be horrified that my mom would do that. But interestingly, I have come to truly love zucchinis, and now you will always find one in my fridge. I wonder what she thinks of zoodles. Does she support zoodles? Yeah, she does. Okay. For sure. Okay, good. Yeah. All right, Jamika. I support zoodles. Okay, important <laughs> questions we need to answer. Okay, Jamika, you're next. Daphne, what do you think is the food that defines? Well, my deductive reasoning did a whole lot of nothing last night. <laughs> <laughs> It's a toss-up between the shrimp and that apple pie, which is calling my name. Um, she's southern sweet, Jamaican heat. I don't know. What does that say to me? I think that says shrimp. I think it says shrimp. Okay, she says shrimp. shrimp. Gail, what do you think it is? Well, it's interesting because I was also going for apple pie, so I'm going to choose apple pie. Yeah, we got to get it one way. Come on. All I right. feel Jamaica, like This could be a tiebreaker is... moment. Okay. You tell me. Ready? Okay. The answer is the shrimp. <laughs> Pour it out, pour it out. Let me tell you, Moroccan <laughs> spice shrimp, to be exact. What is it? Oh, Moroccan That's spice so shrimp. Oh. That is the dish. I will never forget it because starting out in my career, now I was in corporate America, did the whole thing, corporate business suit, all of that. Left that all behind to pursue my passion in food. And I Love started that. out in catering and was really just trying to work my way through. And I booked the gig for an award show in Atlanta, and it was like all the hip hop artists you could imagine, and I was asked to cook for them in this lounge. And it was my Moroccan spice shrimp that was like the, everybody was buzzing around the room, like, and I'm looking around and every hip hop artist is eating this, and this huge entourage comes in and I hear Snoop Dogg's in the house, right? And I can't even see him, it's just he's surrounded by all of these people, and I'll- He's it's, like 6'5", isn't he? But it was like, he's, he's covered with people. <laughs> yeah. And but I knew it was him, because it smelled like weed when we walked over, like, <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> I was like, yes, yeah, Snoop Dogg is in the building, right? He and then, the yes, the and all of his entourage, everybody swarmed my buffet, and it was like, all the food was gone. And they were just like, I'm like, I fed the happiest hip hop high artist in the world. Like that was the night for me. Yeah. And I sealed it. And I was like, if I can do that, I can do anything. Like that is what solidified my career as a chef. Like I could do 
anything in the food world. Okay. So, yes. So, tomorrow night on The Good Dish, what's for dinner? Moroccan spice shrimp? I gotta have those. And Snoop Dogg, come by. Like, I, I have more shrimp this time. So, I will definitely <laughs> feed the entire <laughs> entourage this time. Yes. And a team. <laughs> Two chefs. And there we go. I'll drink to that. Okay. Yes, Love drink that. to Daphne, that. We want to find out what your defining food is. So, okay. Gail, what do you think it is? Okay, so I was... Before you chose mine, I was going to say Caesar salad because I know you have a family Caesar salad recipe that I am now obsessed with because you taught it to me. I love that. So I was going to say that, but then you chose it for me. So I'm going to go artichoke mm. because I know your family grew up in the Mediterranean. You have, you know, that's, you know, where your ancestry is from. And I feel like it just feels bright mm. and Mediterranean. So I say artichoke. Mm. Okay. Okay. All right. Jamaica? I say avocado toast because nobody said it, and we're <laughs> just moving this game along. So avocado toast, let's go. Okay. <laughs> Daphne, what's the answer? Uh, the big answer of the defining dish for Daphne Oz is the artichoke. Oh! oh yeah. Very nice. <laughs> okay, I got to top you off. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Okay. Brian, like that's that okay. You're <laughs> always that guy at the party. I'm, I'm always going to pour. There we so, go. I'll uh, take it. What's let me, the story? Yeah, let me tell you about this artichoke. Please. So, funnily enough, this specific artichoke that we see here is my grandfather's Italian stuffed artichoke. Mm. It is okay. roasted to perfection. It is what he makes every single Christmas for our huge family. My mom's one of six. I'm one of four. It's like 30 plus people every time we get together for a holiday meal. And this recipe is, I think taught me a lot about how to make healthful food. Like, obviously, this is primarily a vegetable, but make it feel indulgent and decadent and celebratory. Have it be something people can't wait to get around the table to eat. This is stuffed with Italian breadcrumbs, pecorino cheese, chopped up stems of the steamed artichokes, roasted oh. to golden brown perfection, slather olive oil all over on top, and to see the joy on my grandpa's face when he puts it down in front of all of us and we just go to town on these gorgeous vegetable yeah. gems is... It, it is that confidence, it is that joy that I try to bring into the kitchen whenever I get in there. So, you well, I agree. Two hundred percent. You guys all kind of have the same amount. I think I'm the real winner, but I want to raise a glass and a toast to all this good dish we have to look forward to. And thank yes, you for thank having you. me. Here's to many We're more so stories cheers, cheers. and dishes cheers, to come. Cheers, mm -hmm. cheers, 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 cheers. Mm. Thank you to Brian for bringing the booze, having fun with us, getting to know our favorite dishes, <laughs> the ones that defined us. And coming up, have you ever wondered what the best way to make bacon is? I know you have. When we return, we are heading to the test kitchen. I'll meet you there. <laughs> <laughs>